If you have a slouched posture and rounded shoulders, you might have been told your whole life to just sit up straight, stand tall, pull your shoulders back, and that's the fix. But what if I told you that might actually be the most counterproductive thing you can do? And the reason why is because these common fixes for rounded shoulders miss out on the most important factor when it comes to having a more upright posture. In this video, I'm gonna show you what that one factor is and actually provide you strategies that work to improve rounded shoulders. Do you ever wonder why you would round your shoulders in the first place? Is it because we're on our phones all the time or in front of screens or because we wanna rebel against our parents? No, it's actually because a more slouched posture is an efficient strategy to breathe. When your head juts forward, it opens up the airway, but it comes at a cost, and the cost is more mouth breathing, which has several negative health effects. And it's this exact reason why standing up tall and pulling the shoulders back doesn't really work. It doesn't change the loss of dynamics in the airway. That is really the key to improving your posture for good. Because when I slouch over, I get changes in my rib cage dynamics. When I slouch, the front of the rib cage bends downward just like this, and you have a restriction of a breathing action which is called the pump handle. When the pump handle mechanism occurs, as I breathe in, the sternum and the front ribs move forward and upward. If you're more slouched, this doesn't happen. And according to this study, that alters lung volumes, making it inefficient to breathe. And it's also the reason why standing up straight doesn't work. Because when you stand up straight, you don't necessarily change the shape of the rib cage. You don't learn how to expand the front of the chest. And it is this expansion of the front of the chest that actually allows you to move your shoulder blades freely so they're not so rounded forward. Now that we know that the legit fix of rounded shoulders is to expand the front of the chest so that way we have a dynamic rib cage, let's go into how to do it. This first move is called sideline internal rotation with bent arm reach. We're gonna use this move to help open up the hips and because of the bent arm reach, it's going to expand the front and back of the rib cage, which is gonna help us get a little bit of space so then we can open up the chest, which will reduce the rounded shoulders. You wanna take your knee and put it on a foam roller. You're not gonna be at a 90 degree angle. You're gonna be about 45 degrees on the hips. Foot's gonna be resting on the ground. From here, I'm gonna press my knee gently into the foam roller, about two to three out of 10 effort. My arm, the top arm, is going to be not directly at my side, but at a little bit forward, just like so. I'm gonna keep the arm bent, palm's gonna face outward. I'm gonna look at my hand, press into the foam roller, silently breathe in through the nose, exhale, slowly reach the forearm forward without straightening the elbow or letting the elbow bend. You're gonna keep the forearm flat and reach it forward. You'll want to perform three to four rounds of five breaths two times per day per side with that move. I would do it from anywhere to two to four weeks before you move on to the next progression. We can use gravity to our advantage to drive air into the front of the chest. The easiest way to do this is by lying face down or in the prone position. If we look at this water bottle right here, and I take the logo side and I put it face down towards the ground, you can see that most of the water is going towards the logo. Gravity is gonna do the same to our bodies. If I lie on my stomach, more air will passively go to the front of the chest. If, and there's a big if to this, and that's being able to get into position without excessive muscle activity. If you notice that your upper back rounds or you're crunching, you feel your pecs working a lot during any of these progressions, that is you essentially getting in the rounded shoulders position because you can't create the space in that position. It's too difficult. But don't worry, I'm gonna take you through a sequence that minimizes the odds of that happening. But if you notice that your upper back rounds during any of the moves, you wanna go back into the earlier exercises to be able to increase enough motion so you can get the most 
out of the exercises. The first move is an elevated wall frog. Here's how to do it. You're gonna start with your knees wider than your hips, bring your feet together. You want your elbows wider than your shoulders, hands are gonna be on the wall. I'm gonna look straight at the wall, silently breathe in through the nose. On the exhale, I'm gonna press my inner elbows into the wall, straight down, and I'm slowly gonna move my entire torso away during the exhale piece. Hold this position, keep the elbow pressure, breathe silent in through the nose, soft exhale through the mouth. Again, if you notice that you're crunching or you're only moving your chest back and head without everything coming backwards, it's likely too difficult. You'll wanna spend more time working on the previous move. You're gonna do four sets of five breaths of that activity. If you spend a couple weeks doing it, you notice that it's <laughs> too easy, you can progress to an elevated frog position using the same cues, silent in through the nose, Exhale, entire torso moves away from the ground as you're pressing into the inner elbows. From there, the progression is pretty simple. You're going to work to lower and lower surfaces until you can do the movement on the ground. And then once you can nail it on the ground to really drive some rotation into the position, you can elevate the arm and the leg on one side and then do the same thing on the other side. Again, with each variation, I would be doing anywhere from three to four rounds of five breaths, two times per day. I would spend at least two weeks on one move, making sure you nail it before going on to the next one. To recap, the key points with each of those exercises is making sure that your eyes are looking straight ahead, you silently breathe in through the nose, you exhale softly through the mouth, as you're exhaling softly, you're pressing gently the inner elbows into the ground and your entire torso is slowly moving away from the ground, not to end range. Make sure that you're not crunching or bending or rounding your upper back or feeling a lot of pec activity during any of the moves. If you are, you've gone too far into the progression, you wanna go back to one of the earlier moves. Now, a lot of times with rounded shoulders, there's also some hip restrictions that can be present. If you are doing some of these moves, you might actually wanna check out this video right here, which goes into how to address some of the hip restrictions that come along with rounded shoulders.